there was an instance where I, 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 I mentioned earlier, I met this director at the bar mm. in the draft house and talked to him, had a nice conversation for a few minutes and didn't know he was a director. And then he shows up at the, the intro to this film. And it, it turned out it was a film called Septic Man. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know how much I can <laughs> describe on public radio. But as you can guess from the title, it's about a guy who's trapped in a sewer. And lots of nasty things get flushed down. this, And he tries to kind of maintain his identity, maintain his sanity. But he, of course, emerges a completely different person and the the reason he gets stuck in the sewer is there's some kind of plague or disease that's afflicted this this Canadian city and because this character it's it's it was a waterborne thing so there's something going on with the sewage system and because this character knows the system he's told go down there find the problem fix it and you'll be a hero you know you can mm-hmm. retire we'll give you all this money and or not retire but we'll give you a nice desk job at the city kind of a puff job but you'll have benefits for the rest of your life you know we'll give you all this money and and you'll be set and so he says okay I'll do it of course he gets he gets trapped down there mm-hmm. and it, the film kind of goes into this kind of absurdist logic and so you watch it and you're like okay it's kind of a body horror film it's kind of one of those sci-fi B-movies that has some kind of uh, political subtext. But then at the last shot of the film, you realize, I've also been watching a superhero origin story because he (laughs) emerges at the end as the septic man. And he's, as the film goes on, I mean, the film isn't, doesn't focus on him in the sewer. Um, it'll, It'll cut to the outside world. And every time it cuts back, he is more and more deformed. Mm. And he's more and more war- his mind is more and more warped, and it's also added to the fact that there are people you find that are living above him, uh, serial killers, I guess. But they're they're these kind of fantastical characters. There's one he's kind of like a metaphorical giant. Mm. Um, the other is a a chainsaw wielding maniac with sharp teeth called Lord Auk, which is a, a reference to uh, Georges Bataille's a pseudonym. He wrote st- books like Story of the Eye. Um, and so you have that, and there's this kind of mythical quality to it. There is a, a political subtext to it. Really, it, it looks on the surface like a juvenile excuse to show a lot of uh, feces and blood and vomit, <laughs> but it's it's a pretty smart film. And it's... It, it, <laughs> That was a film that most people did not know how to take, yeah. except for me and a couple people sitting behind me. We were <laughs> laughing the whole way through. Everyone else was just like, what did we see? <laughs> um, oh, that's amazing. That's but those amazing. are my top three from the festival. Excellent. A Place for Film is recorded at WFIU Studios in Bloomington, Indiana.